Hello guys and welcome back to another video with Linksy. It has been a while. And today we are with Manor Lords. Manor Lords, a fantastic game that just got released by Greg, the developer, who made this by essentially himself. And he uh, he made a great game. And as all great games must, there is a way to break them. Now, you say, how do we get past the great difficult situation to build a great bustling town city such as this, with all the nooks and crannies, fields, and of course, mercenary guards and militia to guard our borders? Well, it starts with a simple little building that we have right here, the trading post. The trading post is essentially the most important building in your entire town. In the case of Hotel, it is the place where everything is bought and everything is sold and where we make money because money makes money and more money means more hoes for us to enjoy and farm to our heart's content. Yes, I was referring to gardening hoes because we have a lot of gardens and fields to take care of. I don't know where your dirty minds have been to. Anyway, let's get started on the simple matter. So you just started a new town and you are a very tiny little village. What do you do? It is very, very simple. Let's go off to Selbitz, where we are currently in the process of building our little village. We are currently a small village and we're looking to get to a new level. To do so, we essentially just need a few number of things which we are on the verge of getting. While they're setting up this uh, important buildings, let's talk trade trade happens at a very uh, difficult uh, you would say confusing way so let's just get over here and click on our posture now i want to click on the trade post you have the trade post over here if you of course have your families in here that will be in responsible for trading you have the first thing where you have a trader that buys and sells as you can see here resources are being bought and sold at very fast speeds and then you have the three other families whose entire job is to sell and collect the goods in the town they do so at whatever rate you want but they do it faster if they have a horse most of the town uses an ox but you need to buy horses and when you buy horses you need to assign them permanently to the specific trade post this allows you to have a much more control over the situation that you have at hand now so we've talked about the, ge the general population there's a storage capacity there's a pantry that collects and sells number of resources such as food and other things and then you have the trade option as you can see here you have a variety of things construction crops food crafting materials commodities and military now you see over here i have bought the rights to trade with every Every single trade route and this is very important as it allows more frequent traders to come to your city there are two types of trade minor trades and major trades minor trades can occur even if you haven't bought the trade route but major trades will only occur when you have the trade route unlocked over here you see that I have a full trade system set with my roof tiles which I think I need to put up here it's still a little bit buggy but it's okay we get around things we fiddle around with the settings till we get the right things and then we have also full trade with planks what does full trade mean full trade means that if we have a surplus of what we decide here to be we will sell that surplus if we have a deficit such as i have right here we will buy the deficit and it allows us to essentially con control our economy as you see there are three options you have the import which is buy till the desired surplus is reached export sell until the desired surplus is reached and full trade which is again buy or sell according to necessities for example something i don't have a lot of is flax so i am going to get 35 flax 
and uh, keep that at that level because with flax I can create linen. So if I am buying flax, I can then go here and export linen once it hits 30. So now I am making money because I am buying flax at two gold, importing it, and I am selling linen at four gold. But you're going to ask me a question, Linksy, how is your export price so cheap? We will get to that in a second. It all has to do with development points. As you can see, there is a lot of trading I am doing. I have a lot of resources, so I am able to trade as I need. But what are the ideal things to trade initially? And that is why we are going to Silbits once again, who should have hope. Wait, uh, there it is. They are have built the church. It has been built and they have built a trading post. Now, as you said, you have a trading post and you have the various trades, as you can see over there. Give me a second till I deal with this enemy. I was trying to record a fucking video, you pieces of absolute shitwags. Thank you. Mother truckers, this band units. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry about that. Yeah, I just put my troops near my manor because it seems they're attacking. Now, where was I? Yes, trading. As you can see over here, with that little annoyance out of the way, as you can see over here, we have all the options we were talking about and we have options to trade. One of the first trades I do recommend is unlocking is the establishing of planks as a trade route export. It is a very easy thing to sell and set it at a decent amount of surplus. But the next thing you should really be working on is making sure that you can upgrade your plots to level two, which over here we need a supply of clothing. Again, very simple to get, but in our mighty town of Selvitz has reached the large village. The first development point I went into Apple Orchard but this is not necessarily the best way to go. I was just exploring and wanting to see if the second town benefits from having an orchardry early on for that little bit extra food. What you really want to go for are these two. Trade logistics, establishing a new trade route, or route always costs a maximum of 25 regional wealth. And better deals, removes tariffs from foreign imports, effectively reducing all import tariffs prices by 10. Now if we're to look over here at trade, we have 98, 96, 72, we have, these are all at 24, but over here we have some which are much higher and much lower than the price that we would be paying and making it much easier for us if we get trade logistics. Important to know that every single time you buy a trade route, the next one is more expensive unless you have trade logistics and better deals allows you to control your trade effectively the best way. Only in a couple of months, we already got a decent amount of trade. So I am going to simply build that up and get the ball rolling. Um, we need to build another stable or a hitching post for our beautiful mule. And we put this at maximum. But now the problem lies in the fact that we're only selling something that's exporting for one single silver. Have no bother. We have a simple solution. To get to this point, you need to have at least some level two plots. And level two plots gives you access to Fletchers. Fletchers and other artistry, such as cobblers. And of course, tailor workshops. Build one of each of those and you have the basis for the best economy you can ever dream of having. You can get then a dye manufacturer between dye manufacturer, a tannery and your saw pit. You have everything you need to have the most incredible economy. You're going to be making bows. You're going to be making capes and shoes. And that is going to make the game so much easier. Large storehouse. Apparently, oh wow, that, that storehouse needs 
needs a little bit of love. Let's build another storehouse here. I'm trying to make a video, guys. More storehouses, less problems, they said. I have a ridiculous amount of product. Jesus Christ, I have everywhere stocked up to the tits, it seems. Ah, this one is still fine. Now, once you have that trade economy running, what really drives up the prices and makes you money is, of course, the military items. As you see here, I'm selling spears at a maximum beautiful profit. I am selling war bows as well. They're easy to produce. Shields as well. Like all of these produce enormous amounts of profit. I have an incredible amount of flour because I am importing grain somewhere. I am importing grain. Yeah, I am importing grain constantly. So I could sell flour if I want for a profit. Uh, actually, full trade. And let's do 300 flour is good. So that allows me to have a net balance. So that's what it is, essentially. When you have the right trade um, development points, get sheep breeding and get orchardry so you have the basics for your economy now from here you go whichever direction you want getting beekeeping and advanced beekeeping keeping where you get wax and eventually make candles is fantastic i do like charcoal burning and deep mining for a simple reason every single part of your industry needs the firewood and firewood gets burned really fast charcoal lasts a ridiculous amount of time it gets used up really quickly but with three of charcoal kilns fully uh, manned up i am able to keep this entire city running at maximum capacity as you can see here i have a lot of traders which are struggling to get in a piece of this action so it most probably means that we need to build a proper trading uh, outpost along the roads which i am gonna do right now and just let them go to town actually that one is bad why is it bad? Because I didn't build it on the road. Anyhow, anywho, that will be built as I am saying. Now, there is a secondary type of trading, which is the livestock trading. I've got a livestock trading post here. And this is where I sell um, sheep, essentially. Sheep is how I make quite a bit of my money. They sell at a very good export price. And you can breed sheep very, very easily. I don't know why this is saying 80 out of 80 when I have only 39 sheep, but such is the way of the world. And finally, the market prices. Market prices fluctuate. They fluctuate constantly. And the way to see this is over here. As you can see, there is a global supply, oversupply of the market. So it means everything will sell cheaper. If it's in red, you will not be selling anything. And if it is uh, in the green, such as apples, apples are selling at a very, very good trade right now. So I am going to do full uh, actual export and anything above 20 will sell for six silver. So it's a matter of balancing, acting uh, your way across. So export, I don't need any bows here, so export all of that. And as I have other things that I can export, so I have hides, but I don't want to export those. I can export leather, but in reality, I want to export commodities. Commodities are the best thing to export. So fully export commodities. I'll just keep five. It's good to keep some commodities for yourself. They do help quite a bit. Now over here, uh, it's not finished yet. General. So yeah, that requires leather and this requires wood. And they are producing at maximal capacity. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the trade system. I hope you find this video useful to a sort of degree. Uh, if you like the video, I'll make more videos, mostly about how to start off maybe the first 15 minutes of the game, how to get a bustling metropolis up and running. And if you have questions, queries, or um, ideas on what you'd like to see covered and explain to yourself, as a three-year-old or five five-year-old that's that's what uh legs requested legs is a new subscriber hello legs um i'll be more than happy to do so till then i shall be walking my roads and observing my rich rich economy thanks for watching guys i'll see you around soon bye bye